Welcome to People Love Process. Now, before I jump into the content for this specific movie, um, I want to thank those who ask questions on the YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. And I like some of the comments you guys make as well. Uh, somebody uh, a couple weeks ago made a comment that uh, they enjoy the kind of I don't know, how do you put it, rabbit trails I go down at times where I tell stories about design or a project or whatever. And I, I'm glad they enjoyed it, but I know at times I might, mm, might go off the trail a little too far at times. So in that case, I apologize. But I want to start this movie off by telling you a story because it is kind of how I got led to develop this movie um, because it reminded me of projects I've been doing since the 1990s um, in another in one of my first jobs, actually my very first job here in Oregon, but my second job after graduating um, art school. So let's dive into it. Now, years ago, the wife of an Adobe creative director watched a course of mine on LinkedIn Learning. Now, some of you might not realize, but I do full design courses on LinkedIn Learning. Now, of course, that's behind a paywall um, so that's why I do stuff on YouTube anybody can watch it doesn't matter where you live um, or if you have any money for that matter but she had watched one of my courses and she told her husband after watching one of my courses that he should invite me to talk at the creative workshop he does every year at Adobe Max. Now that's kind of a cool lead. I like how that came about. Uh, that is how I initially met her husband, the talented Russell Brown. Now Russell is an amazing photographer. You can follow him on Instagram. Just uh, search for uh, Doc Brown and you'll know why he's using that moniker because he looks like Doc Brown from Back to the Future. And uh, but again, he's an amazing photographer and was the one um, who discovered, believe it or not, the Knoll brothers and then told Adobe to buy their software, which we now know as that's right. Photoshop. Russell is like employee number 12 at Adobe. So he's had a whole career uh, working for Adobe, but he flies all around the world doing these incredible photo shoots. Uh, most of his photography is done with his iPhone or other brands of uh, cell phones. And then he uses Lightroom. Uh, he does drone photography. He does 360 photography. He's just amazing and always experimenting and doing really creative photo shoots. So make sure to check out his account. In one of Russell's Max workshops, he invited me to speak at Everyone who went to that workshop that year received a Ricoh Theta 360 camera. It's the one showing on the right here. And this allows you to turn photos that you take with it into what is called tiny worlds. This is a shot of me in my studio. And no, my forehead isn't ginormous like this. Uh, but these are a lot of fun to play with. I've done a lot of photography with the one I have, uh, just experimenting with it. But when I shot this one, it specifically reminded me of a style that I did a lot of in the 90s. Now, I've only done it once as I've been running my own studio since 2002, and I'm going to show you at the end of the movie uh, that one as well. But it's a really fun, uh, creative way to compose a design to tell a story. I call them circular stories, and that's what we're going to dive into. This was the inspiration, so I kind of felt I should share the kind of the story that led in to that. So let's get started. I'll show you my original one. This is one I did back, oh, I believe it is like 1994 or something. And at the time, I wasn't even using Adobe Illustrator. I was using Macromedia. I don't even think his Macromedia owned it back then. Um, I, I don't remember the company off the top of my head right now uh, that owned Freehand, but I was using Macromedia Freehand. It was still done with vector art using points and paths. Uh, that's a that's a open source technology that predates Adobe um, or Freehand at that time. Uh, but this was the design I created. I don't remember who the client was, but I know I kept developing this style. And eventually there was a sportswear company we did some t-shirts with. Now, the reason why the center is empty is because that allows you to drop in some nice type 
um, if you're putting together a design and that might help explain the story being told around the center. Now, there's a link in the description for this movie where you can download the free uh, drawing template and this will break it up. The template does that is breaks it up into kind of eight sections that go around. And if you think like a clock, you the story can start here if it's a specific timeline type thing and then you just go around until you get back up uh, to this position or it can just be a theme based off of um, a genre or um, maybe it's a historical story it doesn't matter but this will help you draw it out now when i say drawing that usually intimidates people but believe me when i say this this is a style any of you can do and i mean any of you let's take a look at the initial drawing here do you think you can't draw like this this is just scribbles anybody could do this now i did these drawings believe it or not on ios and mac os uh, there's a notes program well that notes program also allows you if you're on an iPad, you can use the, the the Apple Pencil, of course, and that's what I created this one and this guy down here and this one and the one in the middle. But these two here that look a little beefy and a little different, that's because I drew those on my iPhone I with my finger, you know? So basically it's like having a Vienna sausage to draw with. And that's why those are a, a little cruder and not thin lines because uh, they're drawn a lot smaller actually. So when I blew them up to match the size of these, putting this image together, they look a little out of place, but these are perfected drawings. They don't need to be. It's just to encapsulate the themes I wanna reflect in my story now even though i broke mine up into like eight different uh, categories it could go, some of these could go a little wider so you don't necessarily have to have eight different drawings this is only six but this is going to compose my entire story so don't get limited by uh, the drawing template you can add more segments to it if you want or less segments now you might be looking at this and going Wait a minute, is that an alien abduction in the middle? Why, yes it is. And what's this, is that Bigfoot? Yeah, it is, that is Bigfoot. And you might be thinking, what story are you trying to tell with this, Vaughn? Well, I live in the Pacific Northwest, and a lot of you might not realize that, but that's where UFO lore started. Um, I can't remember the exact year, but the city, uh, the town, which is only about 20 minutes from where I live, is called McMinnville, Oregon. It's one where the first UFO uh, sighting was captured on a photograph. It was out by a farm. And every year they have a funky kind of UFO uh, little weekend kind of shindig with a parade that's really fun to go to. A lot of strange people show up there, so it's very entertaining. And then you might go, well, you have Bigfoot down there. Well, technically, uh, Bigfoot lore was derived from Native American mythology and the Sasquatch that was part of that. So that's what that represents. So all these things are common to the Pacific Northwest. Of course, you got outdoor like canoeing, walking dogs, hiking. And one of my personal favorite new hobbies is metal detecting. So much fun to do that. Um, you actually find better stuff the older the culture is you're living in and the West Coast is newer than the East Coast. So if you want to go metal detecting and find something cool, you have to go to a beach or something here. But it's still uh, a lot of fun. So all of these, th these things are curious and a little bit crazy and a whole lot of fun. That's what reflects the Pacific Northwest to me. So all I'm going to do is start composing them and use Illustrator as a staging ground. Now, once again, I'm not showing you it, but I scan all of these in or because they were on notes on my iPhone, I just went ahead and sent it to myself on my iMac, on my desktop, brought it into Photoshop and saved out images. And these images I brought in and just rotated them into place to start composing that story. Really easy to do. Now, because this is a circle, I'm using the circle to help me register. So if I take the metal detection doodle, that's all this is, is a glorified doodle. This is why anybody can do this style. 
I'm going to select this and we're just going to go here and go to multiply. I'll select this circular shape, which is just larger. And this just e makes it easier to compose and move into position exactly where I want it to. So I want it to go right about there to fill in that gap. So really easy to do that. Once we've done that, we don't need this circle anymore. So that's how I would compose and start using Illustrator to stage everything. And it's at this point that I'm going to print this out and then on top of it, now I prefer doing things digitally. If you want to draw, uh, I prefer doing things in analog, that is. So I prefer to draw out in analog um, and I tend to use a mechanical pencil to draw with. But if you prefer working digitally, you could just save this out as an image, move it to your iPad, for example, and do your drawing in Procreate or whatever app of your choice is. My daughter personally uses uh, Clip Studio Pro to do all of her drawing and sketching. So whether you prefer analog like me or you prefer digital like Savannah, my daughter, um, drawing is going to help you improve what you're working on. Drawing is a progressive skill. So if we take a closer look at uh, this canoe, this is just a glorified doodle. This doesn't have exact shape and form because one, the style doesn't need to have exact shape and form. This is represent uh, representational, meaning it reflects a canoeer, but does a canoeer actually proportionately look like this? Of course not. A fish, not really like that. And the style we're going to be working with is somewhat silhouetted. So all I do is I draw in a more precise manner just to take the same general forms, but then add some more attributes to it. Now, drawing, once again, is a progressive skill. The more you do it, the better you get. And the more you do it, the funner it gets, because as you go along, you're going to naturally develop your own style. That's where the fun comes in. And it doesn't matter who you're influenced by. I've been influenced by so many different artists since I was a little kid. And for a certain period of time, hey, I like how he draws a nose. And I'll start drawing a nose that way. And then eventually I'll go, well, you know, I like it better this way. And I kind of put my own spin on it. That's how creativity is on all levels. Nobody can say I developed everything that I'm doing on my own because that's not how it works. Everybody is influenced by other people. So what I'm showing you here is just the way I like doing it, but it might help you create your own way of doing it. And that's why you should do it. So this is how I'll progressively draw it out tighter because ultimately this is going to be a guide for my vector building because I know what exact shapes I need to create. So all we're going to do here is set this to like 15%. We'll lock the layer. And then on a layer on top of it, we're going to end up uh, creating our vector art. Now, once again, my sketch is really crude because these were, one, drawn with my finger or an Apple pencil um, smaller on screen and kind of crude. But this is where I'll print this out. And then for me, that is, I draw with the mechanical pencil, once again, to work out with more precision to clarify exactly the shapes I'm going to create. Now, you saw the canoe. And if I zoom in on this alien abduction one, I think in shapes as I draw. So as you're looking at this sketch, the base of this um, UFO, this, this can just be an elliptical shape. So we don't have to use the anchor point tool. We can use a shape tool, like a circle tool to build it. The top part, that could be made from circular shapes. So could the windows or the portholes, whatever they call them on a UFO, uh, that way. And then the easiest part of vector building with the pen tool, wherever your art comes to a point like here, guess what? An anchor point's going to go here, 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 here. This is going to be really easy to build this kind of uh, beam coming out of the bottom of the UFO. So let's go ahead and uh, focus specifically on the canoeer and we'll turn on these shapes. I'm going to zoom out. I'm zoomed in here. And my bad. We're going to turn on 
this layer, we're going to go ahead and set this to 15%, like that. And we're going to lock the layer so we don't move it. Now let's zoom in on the canoeer. And I just want to talk through uh, shape building and the way you think as you're building, as you're drawing, uh, think in shapes. So I'm not going to try to build that paddle with just one continuous outline shape. That would just make it harder. It's easier to break it up and to think in more manageable shapes. So if we think of this rectangle as being the base of a canoe, well, canoes, the bottom of the canoe paddle tends to be rounded. So we can just use the corner widget to select everything and round those. That's easy. This can just be one long rectangle to make up the handle. So we can take these two and just unite them with the Pathfinder. This shape, I'm the reason why I angled it at this end, because I want that curve not to be a perfect uh, corner uh, that's rounded off. I want it to be angled, but I'm gonna uh, first select the paddle handle and the paddle in, go ahead and unite those with Pathfinder and again, we can just select this and select that anchor and round those off like that. We can select these two corners and round these off with the corner widget. So sometimes I use the corner widget like that um, and other times I'll use a plugin. But you don't have to, but even when I use a plugin, you can do all of it with the corner widget in Illustrator. So don't get hung up on that. Um, but that makes it easier uh, to do that. Let's focus on the hair because I want to point out something, and that is I don't try to put anchor points at the tips here. It's a lot easier just to pull out handles to make all of these curves. So if I highlight all of these, you can see the handles pulled out to create the arches that make up the top of his head. No reason to try to build this ear into the line of his body and his arms. Just make it a separate shape because ultimately we can just select those two shapes. I zoomed out by accident. We can select those two shapes and we can just go unite like that. So it makes it easier. Ultimately, once again, this is a silhouette type of style. So we'll go ahead and fuse together all the shapes at some point. If we go over to cloud, I wanna point out a few things. This is how I built it. Does this look okay? Yeah, that's fine. But I, I just wanna show you how easy it is to do something like this. The easiest principle of vector building when using the pen tool, look at your drawing. Whatever comes to a point gets a point. Well, there's a point here, there's a point here, there's a point here, there's a point here, and then we close it. Well, that doesn't look like the cloud. That's okay. It doesn't need to do it need to be. That just puts those anchor points at the correct position. We can grab the anchor point handle. This allows you to grab anywhere on a path and pull it. It'll reveal the anchor handles, and once those handles come out, you can take the handles and you can form that curve. Again, we'll go over here, just pull out the handles. I don't even try to do it by pulling the, uh, the path all the way out. I just want to get access to those handles, and then I finesse it like this. The same thing down here. I can pull this handle out here. And I can pull this handle out here and you're going, yeah, but that doesn't look good. It's okay. We'll come back to that. I'll show you. We'll pull these two out here. We can even go over here. This is where I'll grab the anchor point tool and I'll add one here and I'll add one here. And then I can grab that tool, reposition it. This is going to be a smooth anchor point. And then I can just adjust these as needed. Maybe I want to pull that one out more, bring this one down, correct the level on that, pull this one out, pull this one out. And I think this one needs to go out like that and like that. I may move this over just a little. So that's all it takes to create something like that. So think in shapes, that's going to save you time. Whenever you're placing your anchor points down, put them wherever your drawing comes to a point, gets a point. Those are the easy ones to discern. The curves, you might not even need to put an anchor point like here on the side. Uh, you can use the handles, but at times it's easier to control uh, with an additional anchor point. Uh, the key is to look at 
the beginning of that part of the shape and the end part of the shape. If it goes a little too long to try to create with just two handles, that means you need a, uh, you need a, another anchor point to control it. So you want to add enough so you can control the building of the shape, but not add too many uh, to make it hard to edit and to finesse that shape. So just a few vector principles. Now, vector building is, is pretty simple. Uh, it's not hard. So let's go ahead and turn this layer on. Make sure our sketch is on so you can see uh, everything for the canoe guy, everything, once again, uh, for the UFO. Now, as I work on content and I want to add new content, uh, this is where I'll use the center part, which is uh, this circle in the center. And then I have a larger circle that I've created based off of that. That's because at times I'll have content um, that I need to create. And if I look at the Bigfoot, I want to create Bigfoot, but Bigfoot is kind of upside down. He's like on the bottom of our tiny world. And that's not going to make it easy to build. So how would I build him? Well, I would want to first select that sketch, select this circle. And in this case, I'm going to cheat a little. So we're going to go to the rotate tool here and I'm going to click on it. It'll open up the rotate window. And for this, all we're going to do is we're going to rotate it. And I'm going to put an obscure number in here uh, because I cheated. And we're going to click on preview. And you can see this moves Bigfoot from the bottom where he was to the top now. And he's in a more idealistic uh, position to build from because it's easier to build if you're looking at it uh, almost in a 90 degree uh, uh, angle rather than upside down. It's just easier to read shapes that way. And of course, we can build our artwork like that. So that's all I wanted to do there. Ultimately, I want to put that back in the correct position. So if I go ahead and select our artwork there, select our sketch, select the circle, we can go back to the rotate tool. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to minus rotate. And that's going to put everything in the correct position like that, including the sketch, including the vector art. So ultimately, that's how I'd position things and help myself uh, to, to kind of keep things easier to move around. I wouldn't want to take it, drop it down here and rotate it. You can do it that way. Just think smart. Use uh, geometry, in this case, a circle uh, to help you. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you what all the base vector art looks like. This is how it came out. I think all of this is, is going to work fine. Now, this is where I would once again go back in. You saw how I fused together the paddle and the ear of the canoe. Um, this is where I just take everything. So all these shapes and I'd fuse them together. So if I go into this canoe one, not only would it be his ear, it would be the canoe itself. It would be the background. It would be the paddle. All of this, if I go to unite, I would just unite together because ultimately everything's going to end up being a silhouette style. And I would go into every segment of this circular story and do that with. So what I'm going to end up with is black and white artwork that looks like this. So everything is black and white. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the on the abduction one. So ultimately, what is black here is going to ultimately be colored. We're going to try one color uh, color theme. And what works great with this style is minimal color. Usually just two colors that contrast well uh, will work incredibly well. But with vector art, one of the uh, things about vector art that I think is good, and it's one reason why it's used for branding, uh, rather than pixel-based images is because the clarity, it's resolution independent. I could print this out three stories tall and it'd look just as good as it would on a sticker that's maybe three by three inches. Uh, that's the benefit of vector. It's just math. So it's resolution independent. But vector can be a little too sharp at times. And 
I think what brings humanity to vector art is to round things. So if we look at this face really close, you can see what it looks like. And I think it just looks better with a little bit of rounding. So notice on his nose and uh, here on the front part of his lips and even on the tips of his thumbs, we've rounded them. So if I go to not rounded, this is not rounded. Look at his nose, tips of his mouth and rounded. That's all I'm talking about. Let's go to another section over here so you can see his face here, rounded, not rounded, rounded, not rounded. And that takes a little bit of time to do that kind of rounding. I do that both on negative and uh, the positive. So if we zoom in on the, uh, the beam coming from the bottom of the ship, not rounded and rounded. So I even round off areas like this, this tree, subtle rounds, no rounds. It just looks a little more uh, buttoned up. That's why I do it. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but that's okay. Um, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go over here, cause you can see I have a dither here. And right now I'm just gonna turn on this because we're gonna try some colors here. I'm gonna color this. This is a bitmap TIFF by the way. And we're just gonna go ahead and align it to the center. Go back to our design. So that's gonna be in the background. Everything that's black here, I'll select black and I'll just sample the blue like that. And I think that works pretty good. Now, the more I started looking at this, um, I started thinking about the Pacific Northwest. Now, originally I was thinking the green and because I thought, well, maybe that would go good with the kind of strange theme with aliens and stuff. But the more I look at this, it's not bad. I just don't think it's the right tonal family for this design. Um, I think it, it needs to be a little more earth tone because the Pacific Northwest is all about nature. Uh, nature is a big part of the Pacific Northwest. I grew up in the state of Washington. It's called the Evergreen State. So I felt it needed, uh, the, the tonal family needed to change to adapt to that. So instead of this blue, we're gonna select this and we're gonna color it this deep green and it's even as I did this, I said, that looks a lot better. And then I originally tried a gray, but I didn't like that. So I decided I'm gonna make this instead of gray, I'm gonna make this kind of a, a, kind of a tannish color. And as soon as I hit on that, I go, oh, that looks really good. Now here's the cool part of the exercise files for this movie is if you download the exercise files, you're gonna get a free font. The free font is one I created called Nincompoop. Uh, this is the font that shows some of the character examples. Uh, there's a PDF included uh, with the, the, the um, open typeface uh, that shows all the, the characters um, created. It has embedded little spot images with these heads as shown here. But I'm showing you this because I'm gonna use this to flow in type um, here. And I'm just gonna type in life is crazy fun. Maybe an exclamation point. In the Pacific Northwest like that, and then color that tan. So you could type your, uh, your font in like this, specifically with this typeface. Now, I never like just using type just without kind of distorting it. Um, I never leave it live type. And yes, there is called the type touch tool, but once again, I feel that's one of those uh, kind of half-baked features that Adobe comes out with because it gets some hype to push more people to Creative Cloud, but it really doesn't save time. Um, I usually just save this in an editable form, put it on their layer, and then I go ahead and uh, just convert this to text. So if we zoom in a little bit and I'll just go 
I'm kind of spoiled because on my workstation, I have an Elgato uh, uh, like device uh, called uh, Stream Deck that has all these pre-programmable buttons. And one of them I program is to outline type. So I don't even use the command I used to use for 20 some years, uh, but it makes life easier. So I'll go ahead and just kind of convert it to, uh, to pass. I'll start moving stuff around. This is where I'll just play with proportion. I want this to kind of look more you know, kind of like hand lettered. So this one, I'd probably go a little bigger. So this is where you're just going to have to play with it. And it's why I included the font, because um, if you do a design on your own, which I'm going to encourage you to do, uh, this will allow you to, uh, to kind of use a font that's really compatible with this kind of chunky style. It's why I created this font to begin with. Um, anytime I was working in a style that was kind of chunky, I'd use that. But this is how I go in and start customizing it. Uh, now, that's just going to take time to do that. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that because I've already done it like a good cooking show. So I'm going to turn this on. And this is how I went ahead and just kind of customized the type. Now, this is going to work really great for a bunch of different contexts. Now, I do have a layer here that says final art and you might be thinking, well, listen, aren't you done? Well, I'll always come back to stuff and I'll look at it and I like this, but I saw a few things I needed to change. So I'm just going to turn this layer on and notice by the canoe, we have this skull and some gold coins down here that the metal detector is detecting. And I thought we needed a few more things underground so I decided to add a fish to represent that that's under the water. And then I thought we had a missing area up here and I had birds all through this. I love birds. So I added another bird there and not a big change, but I think one that improves overall design. So I'm always doing that. So um, I want to show you another one that I did. Oh man, this goes back maybe about a decade ago. I did this circular story. Um, there was an event in Florida, and they asked me if I'd create the, the event graphic for it. So I created all these assets. And if you're putting together a story, you could create all your images like this in a 90-degree format. You saw how I rotated the Sasquatch just because it's easier to build in this format. So I would encourage you to build in this format, and then you can compose it by rotating it and putting it in the position you want. But these were all the assets I created for a doggy day parade where everybody brings out their, their pets, uh, dogs, and they have a parade uh, with those dogs. So I got to do a bunch of different dogs, a pug, a wiener dog, a poodle, a Scotty, uh, a little ankle nipper down here. And one of the dogs is driving a car like a Shriner. And uh, then I composed the, the, the circular story like this. And this was uh, printed on t-shirts. So once again, it works really great for that kind of merchandise to, in this case, uh, to kind of promote the event. Uh, so a lot of fun. So remember, anyone can pull off this style of illustration. And the more you play with it, the easier it'll become and the better your results will be. I encourage you to pick a theme. Any story will do. It could be a personal story, a historical story, a genre you find interesting. Uh, maybe it's based off of a, a meme. It can be anything. So just let your imagination run wild. Uh, the drawing template link is in the movie's description and anyone can download it to help with developing your own circular story. And you'll also find, of course, a link to access the exercise files for each movie in this movie's description as well. And the exercise files for this specific movie contains my font nincompoop as well. And thank you to everyone who simply shares a link to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. If you become a member of People Love Process, this helps me dedicate the time necessary to create new content for this channel. And members get a lot of perks and access to free resources. Thank you for watching. People love process. And as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own 
creative process.